While most of the attention in the upcoming election has been focused on the governor and Senate race, there was a close battle for the 59th Assembly seat. Tim Donnelly is the Republican nominee, Darcel Woods the Democratic nominee. Each of you are here tonight. We appreciate that. Each of you will have the chance to make an opening statement for 30 seconds. Ms. Woods, you begin, please. Hello, I'm Darcel Woods. I've been serving our community for over 30 years. I've been a law enforcement official. I am an educator. I have worked with business and industry. I have done a multitude of things to try and bring our community to the economic prosperity that it needs to be. I want to represent you and all the constituents within the 59th Assembly District. Very good. Mr. Donnelly, if you would, please. Sure. Hey, thanks, Fred. Um, I'm Tim Donnelly. I'm the Republican nominee for the 59th Assembly District, and I'm the third oldest of 14 children. Um, I learned supply and demand at the dinner table. So um, I'm running because I didn't see anybody representing me in, in the Assembly, and I think it's time that, that we have the people's voice heard there. And I own a small business, and I think that uh, Sacramento has declared war on businesses. And it's time that we send somebody up there who will fight and actually make the people's voice heard for a change. All right. Illegal immigration is a big issue, obviously. Mr. Donnelly, you would like to see the Arizona law enacted here. Do you believe that sanctuary cities should be outlawed? Well, absolutely. It's, it's just common sense. If you look at the, the SB 1070, the Arizona law that uh, Governor Jan Brewer signed, it actually has a provision in there that will end sanctuary cities by empowering the citizens to sue the local government. So for instance, if, if San Francisco, had an, had, which has an active sanctuary policy, which has actually gotten three members of one family murdered uh, when they refused to cooperate with, um, with immigration officials, that would be ended because the citizens can sue that government, and, and we all know governments are afraid of lawsuits. Everybody is. So it, it puts the power in the hands of the people for a change, and it doesn't cost us anything, and it will solve the problem. Ms. Woods, would you be in favor of outlawing sanctuary cities? Well, you know, Fred, the whole problem here is the fact that when we're talking about bringing Arizona-style law to California, as Mr. Donnelly would want to do, that's not the real issue. The real issue is the fact that the federal government and its agencies have not done the job. We need to make sure that the federal government feet are held to the fire because they are causing the, the, the uh, states to have to deal with the problems, and we should not have to deal with the problems. Sanctuary cities would not even be a thing of, would not even be an issue if, in fact, the federal government was doing their job. So but we know, but we know the federal government is not doing their job. Correct. And that being the case, how do you feel about that? I feel that we should not have sanctuary cities. It is against the law. But what happened was when President Reagan granted amnesty, that blurred the lines of where people could go and where they would be safe. So that opened up the floodgate for that whole sanctuary city. All right. Now, we know it is tough to operate a small business in the state of California. Ms. Woods, what are your thoughts to make it easier for small business owners? Well, first of all, I want to say that I know Mr. Donnelly's stance is that business needs the help, and so do I. But he also wants government to get out of the way. Now, if government is going to get out of the way, first thing, I want to make sure that before we pull government away, is that we help small businesses, that we give them the tax, and, uh, tax breaks, and we give them the incentives to thrive and get the economic pros uh, prosperity back into our cities. So I am for small business. I have people within my family who are small business owners. So I want to make sure that they get the tax breaks that they need, that we give them the incentives that they can open up businesses and they can get people back to work because small businesses are our economic engine. In, this, in the 59th Assembly District, we have no large corporations. We only have small businesses. So I would support small businesses. But first, we need government to help them. We can't get them out of the way. Mr. Donnelly, you believe government should get out of the way? Absolutely. It isn't the purview of government to help small businesses or anybody else. It, it, we, our, our country was founded on a concept called laissez-faire from John Locke, which means leave well enough alone. What we need to do is take a shredder up to Sacramento and start shredding these regulations that are strangling businesses. I can tell you in every single industry, there's some law. It's as if Sacramento has declared war on small businesses. And if small businesses, as we know, are the job creation engine, we're not going to be creating any jobs. The quickest way we can create jobs in this state is to repeal regulation. We don't need another an, one more regulation. Look at what AB 32 is doing. It's going to wipe out a million jobs. We've got Intel. Dry, they're, they're going to be heading up the highway 
you know, in a, in a big diesel pulling all of their their equipment and, and diesel engines, and and they're going to be they're going to be going to, to Oregon to create jobs well, there because California has chased them out. Well, now let's let's look at this. If we deregulate, we know what happens when we deregulate. We've had prime examples of what happens when we deregulate. We have Wall Street that was deregulated. We also have the oil companies that were deregulated. So all regulation is not bad. What I'm saying is, yes, when he's talking about AB 32, I've also examined that. And yes, there has been a side that says it's a job killer. But we have to start looking at being stewards of our environment. I don't want to kill jobs. I want to make sure that we have jobs. But we should be able to do that in an equitable way where business can thrive, but we also are looking towards the future with our environment. So Mr. Donnelly wants us to believe that we need to step out of the way and laissez-faire, but that's not realistic here in California. We want to make sure that we have regulations where people are protected, and that's what we want here in California. I mean, he's out of touch with what the people Look, of the 5th and 9th Assembly District are saying. I, I, I mean, come on. AB 32 has nothing to do with clean air and clean water. When I moved here from Michigan, I, I went to college down in Irvine. I looked up one day when it rained, and I discovered there were mountains. And you know what? Every day now you can see the mountains. We've done a lot on cleaning up our air. AB 32 is about solving global warming. That's what they say. It's really about control and power. It's about the government coming in and taking control of our lives. They're talking about running up the cost of gasoline to $9 a gallon in that so that we won't use cars. Well, that's ridiculous. And they're going to they're going to decimate our trucking industry. Every product is brought to market by truck. So that's going to drive up the cost. And what is it going to do? Is it going to is it going to lower the temperature in California? No. And this isn't about global warming because it's really they've changed the name to climate change. And when I was in seventh grade, it was the new ice age. Well, it's all the same people with the same propaganda. And in the end, it's really about government reaching into our lives and taking our liberty. And I think it's time that we beat that back and say enough. All right, well, let's, let's, Donnelly, let's move on. Let's, well, let's can move I on. make one point here, Fred? Please, quickly. Okay. Mr. Donnelly can, cle- can clearly, with a clear conscience, say that because he is actually being backed by big oil and big tobacco. So that is why he is protecting, the, he's, he's protecting his backers. And we, we understand that in the 59th, and that's why the people are incensed. All right, Mr. Donnelly, uh, you would be in favor of a prisoner exchange program with Mexico, with the exception of death row inmates or those serving life in prison. You would swap them one for one. Why is it a good idea, and how would it save money? Well, we're paying $51,000 a year per prisoner in California per year. This is insane. And that's partly because the federal government has taken over our prison system because of the overcrowding. We think roughly one-third of our prisoners are illegally here. So if we could deport them, they mostly come from Mexico, and pay them maybe 10000 or 12000 or as much as 19000 which is the U.S. national average, that would cut our cost dramatically. You're talking about maybe saving $2 billion, and that's 10% of our budget deficit. But you're getting one in return. Now, that's, well, we're, that's not get, we're not going to get that many in return. I mean, that, the, the reality is you're going to get a few. We don't have that many people incarcerated in, in Mexican jails, but it would be nice to get them back and afford them the protections you know, that, that U.S. jails would afford them, and it would be good to repatriate the Mexicans to, to, to their country, and I, I just think it's, it's just common sense. Ms. Woods? Well, Fred, again, Mr. Donnelly is pushing forth, asserting this misconception It is a one-for-one exchange through the International Compact Treaty, as you stated earlier. So that would mean that we could only exchange one U.S. for one Mexican or one European. There would be no cost savings because once we got that individual back, the $51,000 would be what we would spend. We don't have the privilege of being able to say, well, when we get this one back, we're going to charge the same thing that they charged over in Mexico or in France. That's not how it works, and he is putting forth an erroneous proposition. All right. We have two minutes left. I'll give you each one minute for closing statements. Mr. Donnelly, would you like to go first? Absolutely. I, I'm going to address the point my opponent made here. The prisoner exchange idea is actually just to get people's attention. The bottom line is we want to solve that problem. We, want, we actually want to save the taxpayers a tremendous amount of money. And, and I think if it's a federal issue, great. Let's get the federal officials involved. Let's coerce them to do their jobs. The bottom line is what people want right now is they want government that works for them. They want government out of their way, and we're sick and tired of being taxed to death all so that we can support $11.2 billion for illegal aliens. We're, we're paying a fortune for everything in California. And, and you know what? What's interesting is they didn't cut, our, they didn't, they didn't cut anything. 
All they did is come after business owners like me, come after ordinary people that work for a living. It's as if we've got a target on our back and say, you know what, I'm coming after you for 14 point whatever billion dollars in taxes. And, and we need people that will actually go up there and take our voice that understand what's going on out here in the real world. And I've stood on a lot of porches and I can tell you right now that California is, is in dire trouble and I plan to go up there and fight. Mr. Donnelly, thank you. Ms. Woods, one minute, please. Well, I want to let the people of the 59th Assembly District know that I am a representative that will be true to that word, represent. I will represent every faction of our district, whether that be Democrat, whether that be Republican, Independent, whether that be the working class citizen, whether that be the business owner. I want to make sure that everyone's voice will be heard, as opposed to my opponent, who will only represent the special interest. I want to make sure that people know that I will be the person who will hear your voice. I will even meet with people who have opposed me because that's when you learn how to represent everyone. So if you want true representation, you will vote for Darcel Woods on November 2nd. Ms. Woods, Mr. Donnelly, thank you both very much. Appreciate you coming down tonight. Good luck to thank both you, of you. Thank you. Thank you.